Okay, here we have a 40. Okay, here we have a 42 inch full HD plasma television. I'm just going to go over a quick overview of the boards inside one of these sets. Uh, this is a Panasonic model, by the way. On the left hand side, we have the scan or um, buffer boards, scan drivers or buffer boards, and they run the vertical height of the plasma panel. On them, they have buffer. ICs, buffer chips, or scan drive chips. They have the connections going to the plasma panel itself uh, and they connect to the SC board, the scan driver, or they connect, uh, well this is also called the Y sustain or Y main board or Y drive. Um, we have these connections going between the panel. We also have these high voltage screws. That are, Depending on the panel design, they either use connectors or they use screws to connect the SC and buffer boards. Now there are two buffer boards in this set, a scan up and a scan lower. This is not always the case, sometimes you have a single board. In some very large plasmas you have three separate boards. Um, along here uh, we have an auxiliary board. Uh, this is used on this model to power the fans. You don't see that in most plasma TVs these days because they don't need fans anymore. Here we have a power supply, and the power supply's job essentially is to take the incoming mains, 115 or 230 volts AC, convert it to the various voltages the plasma display and the mainboard electronics require. Typically, you'll have a sustained voltage, which is used to light the panel of around 180 to 215 volts. You'll have an address driver voltage, which is around 80 to, uh, so it's around 50 to 80 volts. And you'll have typically some low voltage rails like 15, 13, 12, five, maybe 3.3. Um, in some cases you can get 30 volt rail from tuner or 19 volt rail for audio or such, depends on the particular design. Over here we have the common sustain driver, uh, which whose job is to generate the common sustain pulses. It works in conjunction with the scan sustain driver or scan driver. Um, same name, a different name, same function. Down here we have the C boards or dress boards, run the length of the panel. And we have the main board here. Underneath the main board, we have a digital board that's not easily visible in this video, but it's hiding under there. Maybe you'll just be able to see it. Digital board or logic board's job or control board's job is to take the uh, signals from the main board, which uh, generates the video image, on, uh, and convert them to signals for the scan and sustain drivers and the address boards. So what faults might you experience if there's a problem with your plasma TV and what parts might cause this? Well, um, it depends. If you have no picture, typically you might start by suspecting the power supply, but you may well in most cases it should be wrong by suspecting that because power supplies are generally pretty reliable and when they fail they tend to cause everything to fail. They rarely fail on just say the VS output without causing the mains fuse to blow for example. So what you would start doing is considering these boards here and these boards can uh, short the sustained voltage if they fail which causes the sustained voltage to collapse uh, other faults can be the main board or digital logic board and this can be because the signal from the digital logic board goes missing or the main board does not turn the panel on. Um, now the job of each board, the common board, generates the common sustain waveform and that waveform, uh, if it goes missing typically on a Panasonic plasma you'll get an error code but if you don't get an error code you typically get a pink or purpley tinged image or a very dim image, a very faint image, very little discharge going on. 
if you get a failure of the scan board, typically you get no image. In rare case, you can get an overblown, overly bright image, um, solid colours, uh, random fill, almost like the pixels are discharging randomly. Uh, if you get a scan driver failure there, you can get a bar across the screen, uh, or you can get a duplicated mirrored image across the screen, or in some cases you can get a similar effect to a uh, scan driver failure that board there. Um, if uh, if you have a single pixel horizontal line across the panel, most likely the panel itself is bad. Um, in rare cases, it can be these uh, buffer boards and these driver assemblies, but uh, it's very rare. Along here, you have the ad address or data drivers, uh, and they've got a board attached to them. Now, that board that's attached to them is basically a fancy connection block, and it rarely fails. So, um, Generally, you don't suspect the C-boards as being at fault. They do have some active electronics on them. There's a chip there for buffering some of the signals. And there's a few capacitors and resistors around the ICs. But usually, if you've got a problem with one of the bars on your screen being that's actually one of these data driver ICs. And unfortunately, that IC is bonded to the glass panel. And that cannot be replaced if that IC fails. So, unfortunately, that, that does mean the screen is bust and there's nothing you can really do about it. You notice these ICs have fairly substantial heat sinks on them, given they're really tiny. Well, they do produce quite a lot of heat. Each IC, typically, on a full HD panel, will have 384 outputs, uh, springing from 0 to 75 volts, or on the newer panels, from 0 to about 55 volts. Uh, but that voltage is obviously very high, and as you can imagine, it's very hard to generate a device which has 384 outputs whose state can be 75 volt or 0 volt. Um, the tolerances between individual outputs are just on that chip are incredibly tiny to ensure it just doesn't arc over internally you know, and burn up. Uh, so generally uh, they can actually fail the reasonably common failure on plasma displays and it does mean the panel is bust. If you have a mainboard failure, typically the panel, well, if the TV turns on, typically the panel will glow slightly in a dark room, but you'll have no image now. Also, if the TV refuses to power on, doesn't seem, I mean, like the red light comes on, but doesn't respond to remote, or when you try and turn it on, nothing appears to happen, for example, you don't get any relay clicks from the power supply, you would start suspecting the mainboard. Um, but I wouldn't immediately suspect that. On some of these Panasonic plasmas, you can disconnect a few connectors, refer to the service manual, uh, but if you disconnect those few connectors, the screen should light up fully white, which indicates the problem is with the main board, because you've isolated everything except the main board. Um, the main board also processes the individual inputs from the signals like HDMI and SCAR and component, depending on where you live, you know, it varies. But um, if one of those particular signals does not work and the others work, it's almost definitely the main ball that's at fault.